So Dali, in anticipation of your 2021 Air McCalman lecture, I just want to probe a few of the issues that I think you're going to raise. And we spoke last time about the failure of scientific information to communicate in a way that catalyzes a sufficient level of action in relation to the climate crisis. And I know that you're offering artistic expression and artistic engagement as an alternative. So what do you think it is about art that makes the type of difference that scientific information can't make? Well, art is directed at the imagination. And so it's going to transform the way we see the world. It has that capacity. And I think we could just look at history, the history of science, to get a sense of how art has played a huge role in transforming the way we grasp the natural world. An example I'd like to think about is um, in the development of ecology as a science. So ecology, the term was coined by Ernst Haeckel in 1866, but when he coined the term, he was thinking of Alexander von Humboldt, a scientist and explorer who died some 10 years before Haeckel coined the term. Humboldt is widely recognized as the founder of ecology. And when you look back and say, well, how did Humboldt come to view the natural world as a dynamic, changing unity of beings that are in constant interaction with one another. Well, he says himself that it was through landscape painting. And he asks his readers to look at the natural world as one would look at a landscape painting. And for him, landscape painting teaches the scientist two things, how to look at the natural world and also what to look for. So how to look at the natural world? It teaches you that you shouldn't just focus on particular species or you shouldn't try to look at the small parts as a botanist would in order to identify what a plant is, but you're seeing it in its larger context and you're seeing all of these dynamic relations together at once. And then what are you looking for? You're looking not for this plant and then that plant and then that plant, but you're looking into the way the plants blur into one another or the trees blur and become a forest. And this teaches you to think about trees and plants differently than you would if you didn't have that perspective of a landscape painter. You start to see that the trees are part of a forest and what makes them what they are is part of a forest, but also that the forest is in the trees. And so there's this reciprocal relationship that he recognizes that no one had seen before that. I think what's so fascinating about what you're saying, two, two aspects of what you're saying, firstly, is that we think of scientific knowledge as being in its own stream and art as being in its own stream. And often, particularly in the academy, we think of art as translating science, but you're actually flipping it and showing that the scientific imagination is informed by encounter with art. I also love the way that you talked about that art teaches us, but it teaches us in a really different way, right? So it doesn't teach us through a series of principles or rules, but through the encounter with art. It's aesthetic, right? It has to do with perception. It teaches us how to see. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we really need to learn in terms of the environmental crisis. We need to learn to see differently. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to see that we are so much a part of this world. Mm -hmm and that it affects us and we will be affected by it. Mm -hmm. And art has this potency mm -hmm. to, ch to transform the very way we see the world.